So over the last few months, I have seen lots of ads for View smart glasses, and I hadn't really heard much about them. I think it was an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter campaign to bring out the View Pros, which were their first kind of audio sunglasses and audio prescription glasses. Um, and I've been curious about them, but I have featured a couple of smart glasses, audio glasses on the channel before. I featured the Echo Frames and the Razer Anzu, um, and I've had mixed results and mixed responses to them. Um, the Echo Frames are really cheap and plastic, but they do have herself the voice assistant built in which is so handy for me. The Razer Anzu have that blue light filtering for looking at monitors and are better sound quality but both of those are real plasticky and kind of very obvious that they're a gadget uh, whereas Vue have brought out a new pair called the Vue Light which are much lighter and designed to be much more discreet and much more like actual glasses or prescription glasses or sunglasses. So they sent me a pair to try full disclosure these were sent to me for free um, but all these opinions and ideas and things that I'm going to express in this video are my own they're not paying me to give a review or anything like that but I was quite impressed with them I gotta say and particularly at the price point that they're being offered what struck me the minute I opened the box was the fact that they do look and feel like proper sunglasses they don't feel like a plasticky gadget the way the echo frames do so I'm very quickly going to unbox them to show you what it looks like and the stuff that comes inside and then I'm going to play around with them for a few days uh, maybe a week listen to the audio quality the features and functions uh, and then report back on how good it is so stick around So View Smart Glasses have sent me their new uh, View Light, which are apparently lighter and more discreet smart glasses with audio and audiobook and all that sort of capability built in. Um, and these ones are a follow on to their pro version. So I'm just going to take a look. They've sent me one called the Leo design. So there's lots of different designs of these. So unlike something like the, the Razer Anzu smart glasses, where there's only kind of two different looks um, and the Echo Frames, where there's only kind of a limited range. There's lots of different types of looks, types of frames and everything else. So it comes straight away in this neat little pouch. So let's just open this up. Oh, wow. Okay, I gotta say first impressions. I mean, they are super, super light first and foremost. Um, they're like aluminum or some kind of metallic frame. The, the, the arms, the, the frames themselves are super thin. They are by far and away the kind of most like real sunglasses of smart glasses that I've seen. So just before we go any further, just to give you a comparison, if you compare those to the very thick Razer Anzu, which are quite plasticky. Now the Razer Anzu, the sound quality on these is great, but you can see kind of the thickness of the frames here. Um, you know, it is really, really thick frames and it is quite blocky and chunky. Whereas this is just really super thin and super like, like real sunglasses. Like you wouldn't really know other than the fact that on the bottom they have this um, charging port on each side. So same as on the Razer Anzu, the charging ports are on both sides and it's a magnetic. So that's, they are slick looking. They are, so, the arms on these are really, really skinny. Um, like again, if you didn't see the, the touch panels on either side, you would think they are just normal sunglasses. They, they feel like normal sunglasses. They look like normal sunglasses. I really love the design of those straight away. Um, and then if you compare again to the Echo Frames, which I also have, the Echo Frames are the most plasticky of the lot, which is disappointing from Amazon. You know, the arms are quite chunky on the, the Echo Frames. You know, it's quite noticeable that they are kind of smart glasses and they are quite plastically. Like these ones kind of have a lot of give in them and they don't fold great, which is disappointing. So the, the main issue I had with the Amazon Frames was the build quality just of the three so far, it's the poorest. But these ones, the, the View Light, you know, that's that's really, really good. And these are these are about, a, these start from about $149. So that is amazing quality. Let's just see what else is in the box. This is probably the charging cable. Yeah. Yeah, so charging cable and um, magnetic charging cable so there's two little ports on that that'll connect to either the arms magnetically let's get them the right way around yeah and happy days they're connected and then it's just a standard usb there's no plug in the box but sure you don't need that a little microfiber cloth safety and handling and then very basic instructions on how to use it so connecting your glasses so you hold down so yeah, so you hold down both sides to turn on and hold down again to pair, you know, pair them via Bluetooth, 
Touch control is fairly straightforward. Double tap to answer and end calls. Play pause music. Long hold is your voice assistant or to reject an incoming call. And then it just gives you some lens care at the back. So all straightforward. Of the three smart glasses I've tried and reviewed on this channel so far, these, these are the ones that are most like glasses. Um, I really like that design. I really like that look. Let's take off these little. Oh yeah, and there it's actually, wow, that's super subtle. So I thought the, the, the buttons were gonna be much more noticeable, but actually it's just the little V for view that you see on either side. I think I'm gonna have a winner in terms of my everyday carry as opposed to these. I mean, these, the echo frames are handy because you know they kind of have Amazon herself, the voice assistant built in. These now I think are gonna be my new everyday um, wear smart glasses. So let's give them a look. Okay, so that's interesting. So as I held both sides, it, there was kind of a delay between saying power on on one side to the other. So I'm hoping that won't cause any kind of Bluetooth lag, uh, but they're super comfy. I, I think they look kind of nice. Um, I could be wrong, but it seems like there's an ever so slight blue tint to these lenses. Um, but that could, I could just be imagining that based on the light inside here. So again, same as the Razer Anzu, it took a little bit of time for me to figure out exactly, you know, where to, where to tap to get different actions to work. Um, it is, there is kind of a, a notch where you can feel the V for view. And, and after a while you do get used to where they're positioned. So I've actually just managed to start the music playing um, by tapping on this side. And music's pretty clear. Um, there's not a huge amount of bass on the sound, but it's, it's easily comparable um, to the echo frames just, just from my ear. And it's, it's really clear, it's real crisp, it's nice. And again, the, even though there's two separate frames or two separate arms, there doesn't seem to be any noticeable difference or lag between the sounds. So same as earbuds going in your ears. Okay, so I now have it at maximum and that's pretty loud. It would actually be louder than I was getting from the Echo frames. Um, and maybe, maybe quite similar to what I was getting from the Razer Anzu. I'm gonna turn that down now because it's kind of blaring in my ear. So I have noticed that when I use the buttons, even though the tap and hold, you know, that's what they say to do in the manual, I find that I kind of have to tap swipe almost. So I'm, I'm kind of grazing or glancing the buttons as I'm hitting them. So if I want to turn on the music, I'm kind of almost tapping and then swiping away. Um, it is a little bit fiddly, which is, which is unfortunate. Um, but I found that with a lot of smart glasses and sometimes there is just that sweet spot that you get used to. In order to use the voice assistant with smart glasses like these, the phone has to be unlocked. Um, the smart glasses can't actually bypass the lock and use your voice assistant, particularly if you're using um, herself, the Amazon voice assistant, whereas the pro version can pair with uh, Views app and actually connect to your um, Amazon account. And apparently that can bypass and you can just use it completely hands free it's not a huge deal breaker for me but I do like that ability of, of calling on herself you know even if it's a tap you know um. okay so as a little bit of an update um, I did actually manage to get herself the voice assistant kind of working so what I did was I installed the the view app and I connected it with my Amazon account and then I set that as the default voice assistant so the view app is technically my default voice assistant and what happens then is even with the phone locked, if I tap and hold to call up the voice assistant as if the phone was locked or unlocked, um, I can then hear two beeps and I can say herself and give a command. So I can get things like the time and whatever else. The catch is that it doesn't let me play Spotify. It doesn't let me play Audible this way. So the functionality is really, really limited. And it also means that the device fault of defa default voice assistant now on my phone is actually the view app bypassing or, or accessing um, herself, the voice assistant, the Amazon voice assistant. So I'm not going to leave it like that, but it is, there is a, a workaround, so to speak, to get herself um, to answer questions, things like the time, the weather and whatever else. Um, but since the light version don't seem to be supported by the app yet, um, this is this is a workaround, but it's not really going to give you much functionality. It's pretty clear, pretty clear sound. Pretty impressed with that, even with noise, it, uh, it's, it's pretty loud. It's loud enough for me to hear it, even over the traffic. Yeah, quite like that. Look pretty slick too. I do have to keep tapping them though to get them to respond, which is a bit frustrating. 
So I've been using these for a little over a week now and what I can say is that the audio quality is stellar. It's crystal clear either on calls, if I connect it to my laptop and do Bluetooth calls that way, um, absolutely no issues, uh, no lag, no latency or anything like that that I've noticed. Outside is probably the only place where they struggle if it's a little bit windy, but actually the volume on these is higher than some of the other smart glasses that I've tried, so it hasn't been that much of an issue. So I've enjoyed them, plus, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they are the ones that feel um, the most like a pair of sunglasses. Um, and the fact that they're available in lots of different frames means you're gonna find something that appeals to your particular style, um, your particular look and feel. There are a couple of cons, obviously. The fact that it is two separate charging ports is a little bit fiddly and takes a little bit of time to get used to. Um, the sound quality could have that little bit more bass, but again, um, you're not gonna worry about that too much with these type of glasses, these type of frames. Overall, I think these are a good option for lots and lots of different use cases and lots of different people. The touch controls are admittedly fiddly. Um, it does have touch panels on either side, so if you're right-handed or left-handed, it doesn't really matter. All you can really do, though, is trigger voice assistant, answer calls, end calls, uh, start and stop music. There's no volume or anything else, or skip or back um, on these glasses. And I know these are a light version, but I would have loved to see the ability in the app to actually change what the gestures did on the devices. But I'd say, given that the devices are so small and neat and light, there isn't the ability to kind of reprogram the buttons. Battery life's about four hours, which again is comparable to something like the Razer Anzu, which are about five hours, so they're a little bit more. Um, and the Amazon frames, I'm getting about three and a half, four hours out of them. So it's kind of comparable in terms of battery life. There's about 20 hours standby on these, which is fairly decent as well. Um, realistically though, if I use them out on a day, I'm probably just gonna sit them beside my bed and charge them at the end of the day. Sound quality, as I said, is pretty good. I'd love a little bit more base but considering how thin the speakers must be to give that crystal clear quality um, it's not a big complaint for me but the volume of these does beat the Amazon Echo frames um, and kind of rivals the Razer Anzu glasses so there's kind of a tie there between the Razer Anzu and these ones for me but definitely beating the Echo frames hands down um, design wise no contest these are by far and away the best weight wise by far and away the best and just overall look and feel by far and away the best. Another cool thing that you can do with these is um, if you have your camera open on the phone you can actually use these you can have them so that when you tap you can actually take a selfie with your camera so that's a neat uh, little feature as well um, and you can obviously get not just the sunglasses versions in four different uh, varieties or four different frames you can also get glasses versions which can have prescription lenses and whatever else so there's a huge amount of choice on this and if you're willing to pay that little bit more there is the pro version um, um, that gives you just that little bit more and gives you the, the native voice assistant and whatever else. If you really though, all you're looking for is the ability to listen to audiobooks and music in your ear and make and receive calls, these are your best bet because they just do double up as proper sunglasses. So for my money, these are probably, for the most users, this is gonna be the option for them. So folks, I'll leave links to this bit down below as well as links to some of the other models that they do and the pro version. If you have any questions about this or anything else I've featured on the channel, please do feel free to hit me up in the comments below. And as ever, I'd love it if you gave this video a like. It doesn't cost you anything, but it boosts it up in YouTube's algorithm and lets other people see it. And if you'd be uh, so kind as to subscribe to the channel, that really does help me out. It doesn't cost you anything, but really does help me out uh, and continues getting me to make these videos for all you lovely people out there. As ever, you can follow me on any of the social medias listed here, but do hit me up in the comments if you have any questions here, because it's the quickest place that I can find. And I do try and reply to any comments that come in um, on each video every week. So that's it for this week, folks. Thank you very much. And all that's left to say is bye-bye for now.